Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. We're back working with Radial Impact and trying to get our menu AI working. And again, my name is Devin Sherry. Let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, where we left off last time, uh, just to kind of play it in the editor, uh, we got the ability for the menu AI just to play itself. So it, it plays at random, stops, and keeps playing. Uh, there's no way for us to play the game. You know, uh, we need to add that functionality now, but uh, we're able to get the menu AI working just a little bit. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, we left off in the static circle uh, blueprint. That's where we put in the menu AI and having it go uh, continue changing the circle's location and changing the color and setting the random location and scale for the mesh. Uh, so the last thing we really need to do uh, within the static circle for right now is to basically copy and paste this section here for the branch uh, where we're checking to see if we're playing the game or not. So let's copy and paste that. And we want to set this condition for when we click on the static circle mesh. We don't want anything to happen until we're actually playing the game anyway. So let's put that through and hook that back up. So now when we click on the static mesh it won't call, get called for clicking the static circle until we are actually playing the game. So let's compile that. And the real last thing we have to do is go into our uh, BP Classic Mode uh, button uh, blueprint. And we're doing it just in the Classic Mode button, just as an example. You know, we have the Time trial Trials and Waves buttons, but for right now we're just going to work with the Classic Mode button. And what we're going to do and what we're going to set up is, so uh, at the beginning we're going to have the menu play itself through the menu AI, but once we click on the button we're actually going to have the ability to stop the menu AI and allow us to play the game like normal. So to get this started, uh, we need to create a new macro, so let's go ahead and create a new macro, and we'll call this uh, menu AI to gameplay transition, and it just needs uh, one input pin that's an executable pin, and we'll call that in, and then it needs one output executable pin that we'll call out, and for right now we'll move the out. I'll put section away for uh, for right now just to make sure everything's nice and clean. And the first thing we need to do, because uh, when we click the menu button AI, I'm sorry, when we click the classic mode button, we want to check to see if the uh, the timeline's playing for that dynamic circle, if it's growing or shrinking. So we want to check if it's playing at the moment. So we need to grab a dynamic circle reference. And right now we don't have a dynamic circle reference. So what we need to do is go into the construction script and create those references. So. Let's go into the construction script. Let's pull out the classic mode button and my set here. We'll do get all actors of class. And since we're looking for the dynamic circle, we can filter it here if we spell it correctly. So BP dynamic circle. Pull out the out actors here. Do a get. Leave the default value of zero. Pull from the get and do a cast. And we're going to cast to the BP dynamic circle. And then we're going to hook that up. And then from that as BP, I'm sorry, as BP dynamic circle, we're going to promote to a new variable. And we'll call that dynamic circle reference. And then we're also going to make a reference to our static circle. So almost the same idea. Let's do a get all actors of class. This time we'll do the static circle. Pull out from there, do a get. Pull out from that, do a cast to BP static circle. Plug that up. And then from the as BP static circle, we're going to promote that to a new variable and call that static circle reference. So now that we have our references in place, let's compile. Let's go back to our macro for the menu AI to gameplay transition. Let's grab the dynamic circle reference. Pull from that the scale dynamic circle for our timeline. And we want to see if that's currently playing. So pulling from that, we can do the is playing. And just for organizational purposes, we can just stack these here. And then from the return Boolean value of that is playing, we're going to get a branch. So basically, if the timeline is playing for the dynamic circle of growing and shrinking, at this point, once we click the classic mode button, we want that 
uh, timeline to stop. So we can just copy this section where it has the dynamic circle reference and the scale dynamic circle reference. Just copy those and then pulling from this scale dynamic circle we can just type in stop and stack those together. And we need to do that for the true. And then once we tell it to stop, we want to set the playback position of that timeline back to zero. So again, we can just copy these two references here, pull out from the scale dynamic circle reference, and do set playback position. The default value is going to be zero, zero, so we can leave that alone. Plug that up. And then it's at this point, we want to make a delay. We'll do a delay of maybe like 0.5 seconds is fine. And then after that 0.5 seconds, that's when we want to go ahead and call the static circle reference to update the static circle. So let's grab the static circle reference, pull from that the update static circle function, stack that for organizational purposes. And once we, once we actually click the classic mode button, what we want to have happen after we have the update static circle uh, is we want to make sure we can input. So let's grab the dynamic circle reference, drag out from that, and we're going to do a set B can input or set can input. And we need to set that to true. So let's plug that up. Then we need to grab the dynamic circle reference again, and we're going to set the uh, is playing game boolean to true as well. that up and then we need to plug that into the output so we're almost done now but what we need to do is set up the logic for when this is false so if the when we click on the classic mode button and the timeline for the dynamic circle is not playing at all what we're going to do is just drag out the, from the false we'll do a delay of about 0.2 is fine as the default and it's at this point we need to copy these two boolean sets for the input and playing game. Because no matter what, if the uh, dynamic circle timeline is playing or not playing, when we click on the classic mode button, we want those variables to become true. And then we also want to just make sure the playback position of that timeline is at zero. So we can copy this as well and paste that over. And then after we set the playback position, we can actually just plug this into the output. So connect that. Then we're going to compile, and then back into our event graph. Uh, right here, the very top one, this section right here, this is for when we click on the classic mode button mesh. That's when we, it actually like grows and shrinks back. Uh, we want this to call our new macro, the menu, a, menu AI, to the gameplay transition. So let's grab that and pull it out. And then where it says finished from our timeline, so once this timeline is finished, we want to call that information. So as soon as the timeline finishes for clicking on the game mode button for classic mode, this section calls gets called. So we see if the uh, timeline's playing right now. If it is, we're going to stop that timeline. We're going to set its playback position to zero. We're going to wait 0.5 seconds, and then we're going to update the static circle and set these booleans to true. And then if it's false, if it's not currently playing, we just delay for 0.2 seconds. We make those variables true as well, and we set the playback position to zero, and then put it into the output. So we can compile that. And now, if we play, we have our menu AI playing itself. But then if I hit the classic mode button, it should stop playing itself. And then we should be able to play. So all we really want to do right now is set the ability to uh, turn back on the menu AI just for testing purposes and everything like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to use uh, this spacebar as our toggle between turning the menu AI back on. So what we need to do is go into our, uh, we go to blueprints and we open up our level blueprint. And we should have already a static circle reference in our spacebar set up from our previous tutorial. If you don't have this set up, all we did is another get all actors of class, and then a get, and then the cast to the uh, BP static circle. I made a static circle reference. 
And then we have the space bar to update the static circle and call that function. Uh, so right now we can disconnect the update static circle. We don't need to do that. And what we need to do now is add a reference to our dynamic circle. So again, we'll drag out from the end here, do get all actors of class. Set this to the dynamic circle. From out actors, we'll do a get. And then we'll cast that to the dynamic circle. Plug that up. And then from the as BP dynamic circle, we can promote to variable and call that dynamic circle reference. So what we want to do now from the space bar, what we first want to do is check to see if we are playing the game or not. So we need to do a check for the B is playing game reference, which is in our dynamic circle. So let's do a get of that and do a get is playing game and then pull out of that a branch. And then we can stack those for organizational purposes. And then plug the spacebar pressed into the executable pin for the branch. So if is playing game is true, then what we want to do is grab the dynamic circle reference and do a set playing game. And we want to set that to false just so we turn that off and make sure that that variable is not true. So make sure they connect here. And the last thing we need to do is grab another dynamic circle reference and then call our menu AI. So when we're playing the game and then we press the space bar, it checks to see if we are playing the game and if we are, it sets that variable to false and then it makes us call the menu AI which will then start playing the game for us. So let's compile, let's hit save and let's test that out. So again, when we first start playing, it's the menu AI, it's playing itself. Then if I hit classic mode, it resets, and then we can play the game. Then if I hit spacebar, the game starts playing itself. Then if I hit classic mode, the game starts playing itself. I'm, I'm sorry, we are, we're able to play the game now. Then we hit spacebar, the game starts playing itself again, then we hit classic mode, and then we're able to play. So that's everything we needed to do for our menu AI, so that's going to be the end of this tutorial series with Radial Impact. So we were able to create these game mode buttons that grow bigger when we click on them. We're able to get our dynamic circle and static circles working, and we're able to play the classic mode and it allows us to play the game. So that's what we did in this whole series, so I hope you did learn a lot. I do want to thank you guys for watching, and again, my name is Devin Cherry, and again, I appreciate you viewing this tutorial. Hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you next time.